uh, dear learners, I am going to take a class of semester 1 and unit 2, argument and argument form, truth and validity. In this unit, argument and argument form, truth and validity, we have to discuss the basic concepts. They are nature of argument, kinds of argument, argument and argument form, truth and validity. Dear learners, uh, before going into this class, uh, truth and validity, argument and argument form, you have to know also the concept, a basic concept of logic that is what is logic. Now, dear learners, you know the logic, the very word logic is derived from the Greek word. You see, the Greek word logos, L-O-G-O-S, logos. And it means thought or reason or law. Dear learners, logic is defined as the science of reasoning. This definition is not accepted as the real definition of logic because reasoning implies a special kind of inferring or inference. In inference, dear learners, we proceed from known to unknown. Again, I repeat, dear learners, in inference, we proceed from known to unknown, known to unknown, or you can say we can proceed from perceived to unperceived, or you can say we can proceed from seen to unseen. Now, dear learners, we can take an example. That example is, you see, that there is smoke in the hill. And that is the known case. There is smoke in the hill. Or you can say it is perceived case. Or you can say it is seen case. And from this perceived case, we proceed to unknown case. That is there is fire in the hill, which is derived from the premise like there is smoke in the hill. But the important issue is that logic does not include the act of inferring or inference within the subject matter of logic. They are learners. Again, we can define logic as the study of the methods and principles used in distinguishing correct from incorrect arguments. So you see, this helps us to make a distinction between correct and argument, correct and incorrect argument. That is why it is clear that logic is a tool or strategy by which we can find out the distinction between good reasoning and bad reasoning. The study of logic, therefore, enhances our reasoning power to test the arguments, whether they are valid or invalid. It also helps us in our domestic discourse to argue systematically with others. They are learners that logicians dealt with validity or correctness and invalidity or incorrectness of arguments. While psychologists concern with mental process, that is why the traditional definition of logic as the study of laws of thought is not satisfactory from the logician's point of view. Now you see, dear learners, as logic 
deals with correctness or incorrectness of argument. So question naturally comes what is argument and what are its kinds. Now they are learners, you see argument consists of a group of propositions of which one is the conclusion and others are premises. You see argument consists of you see one is conclusion another is premises. Conclusion is derived from the premises. They are learners, you see again I repeat, argument consists of a group of propositions of which one is the conclusion and others are the premises. Others are premises. And you see, uh, of which one is the conclusion and others are premises, which are regarded as providing support or grounds for the truth of the conclusion. Now you see there are learners, these premises provide support to the conclusion. And you see, premises are those propositions from which conclusions are derived. And conclusions are those propositions which are drawn from the premises. So you see there are learners, there is a necessary relationship between conclusion and premises. So in an argument, there is a necessary relationship between conclusion and premises. Now there are learners, you see, it will be clear to you when we go through the examples. Now there are learners, you see, the example, all men are mortal, all men are mortal, then you can say another one, Socrates is a man and therefore Socrates is mortal. Socrates is mortal. Now you see the learners, this is an argument and here you see all men are mortal and Socrates is a man, these are propositions or these are premises. And the last one, Socrates is a mortal, this is conclusion. This is conclusion because the premises, all men are mortal, Socrates is a man from which the conclusion is derived and that conclusion is Socrates is mortal in this example. Now they are learners, you see. So in an argument, there is a necessary relationship between premise and conclusion. If we do not notice a necessary relationship between premises and conclusion, then the argument will be invalid. Here you see there are learners, in this example, in this argument, or this argument is valid because the conclusion is necessarily derived from the premises like all men are mortal and Socrates is a man. So, therefore, they are learners, this argument is a valid argument. And they are learners, you can take another example that is you can take all men are rational, all men are rational and Sibaji is a man, 
Therefore, Sivaji is rational. This is the example of argument. And another example you can take, if rain comes, if rain comes, if rain comes, we will not go out. We will not go out. And second one, rain comes, rain comes, therefore we will not go out. We will not go out. This is also an example of argument. So again you take another example that is A, that is B, and another example that is C. You can take most actors are celebrities. Actors are celebrities. And Amir Khan is an actor. Amir Khan is an actor. Therefore, Amir Khan is a celebrity. <coughs> now you see. They are learn us these three examples, A, B, and C. The first two examples show that premises imply the conclusion. The A and B, these first two examples show that premises imply the conclusion and which is necessarily derived from the premises. It means the conclusion, the first one, that Shivaji is rational and the second one we will no go out. Here the conclusion is necessarily derived from the two premises. And the third one premises also supported the conclusion. 